Hello everyone, this is Matt Couture from Deepak London and today we're going to have a quick look at Cisco's Unified Computing System or UCS. We are going to start with a quick architecture overview and then uh, we're going to see how do we actually manage a UCS domain or UCS system. Uh, then we're going to have a look at some uh, differentiators of UCS, that is stateless computing and service profiles and we'll uh, round it up with a quick look at the different business benefits that arise from using Cisco UCS. So without further ado, uh, let's uh, compare what we usually see in a, in a data center to, uh, to a Cisco UCS solution. So you might be familiar with this uh, setup um, if you're using some sort of uh, fiber channel storage uh, you probably have at least four networks in your data center. Uh, two storage uh, networks, a LAN and some sort of out of band management network. And uh, if you were to connect a traditional late server chassis, uh, you would have to make sure that uh, each and every uh, chassis has connectivity to all of those networks. So you would end up with uh, having uh, at least five connections per chassis. Or if you're using rack mounts, that would probably be uh, five, uh, five connections uh, per rack mount. So you can see that with each added rack mount or, or with each added chassis, the complexity of cabling uh, increases significantly. What also increases is the number of IP addresses uh, that you have to assign and, and to manage. Now, we got rid of that complexity in, in Cisco UCS. Uh, how was it done? Uh, let's uh, let's have a quick look. So notice that we left those traditional networks alone. We're not interfering with the data center uh, design here. What we are doing is introducing uh, a pair of fabric interconnects that handle connectivity to those uh, data center networks, uh, and then what you do is you connect each individual chassis to the pair of fabric interconnects through what we call input-output modules. And what you gain is a significantly reduced complexity of both cabling and management, as all the system's intelligence has been put into the pair of fabric interconnects. So if you need to deploy a new chassis, the only thing you need to do is to plug each input-output module to uh, its um, fabric interconnect. Um, as I mentioned, all the intelligence has been put on the fabric interconnect. That also means that the entire UCS domain, which can comprise of up to 20 chassis, uh, 160 servers in total, uh, can be managed from a single IP address. That gives you not only a reduced uh, uplink complexity or inter an interlink complexity, but also a significantly reduced uh, number of IP addresses that you, uh, that you need. So let's see how does it look in real life. Here is a photo of a system we have in CPOC London, one of a couple of UCS deployments there. And uh, what we see here is the pair of fabric interconnects. Again, this is where your uh, entire UCS domain's intelligence resides and this is where you manage up to 20 chassis from. Uh, we can see two chassis here, uh, fully uh, equipped with, uh, with servers, and these are the power supplies for the chassis. Now, if we look at the back, we will see the input-output modules that I previously mentioned, and the fan trays, which are not uh, uh, highlighted on the picture. Now let's have a look at how do we manage a UCS domain. All right, what we see here is Cisco UCS Manager, which is a GUI-based management tool for uh, Cisco UCS. Uh, what greets us here is this uh, uh, logical topology of our setup. Uh, you will immediately notice that there are not only chassis here, but also rack mount servers. Now, even though uh, UCS has been designed with uh, primarily with blade servers in mind, we also have a 
fairly rich portfolio of Rackbound servers that can also be attached to Fabric Interconnect and managed from the single uh, pane of glass. Now, <clears throat> if we look at the equipment tab here, uh, as we drill down to individual elements, uh, you will notice that we do have access to those even even tiniest, even lowest uh, elements of the system. Uh, we can immediately um, see their status and, uh, if applicable, uh, see any relevant counters or, or other data. Now, this stems from the fact that the entire UCS platform was designed from the ground up uh, by Cisco, and this gives us this low-level access into uh, various different elements uh, of the system, down to an individual um, uh, UUID of a server or a Mac of a network adapter. As for the other tabs here, uh, let's have a look at uh, the LAN tab. It gives us the option to uh, define uh, QoS policies, uh, VLANs, or uh, resource pools, such as IP address pools and MAC pools, that will be uh, later consumed while uh, creating a service profile. We'll get back to the service profile in a minute. Uh, we have the same option for uh, storage area networks, except, of course, we'll be configuring VSANs instead of VLANs and uh, worldwide node and port numbers uh, instead of MAC IP addresses. The admin tab gives us a summary of faults and events that uh, took place uh, and also gives us the option of uh, uh, defining uh, user roles and therefore um, setting up role-based access to uh, UCS Manager. And this can come in handy if uh, you want to segment the responsibilities between, say, your storage team and uh, your uh, uh, your networking team, uh, so that, say, the storage guys can uh, go in and set up new vSANs, but they can only uh, view what VLANs are available without actually interfering with the configuration. We do have the option of setting a call home policy as well as uh, performing backups here. Keep in mind that this was just a brief overview of UCS Manager, and there's a lot more under the hood. Uh, we briefly just in the surface here. Uh, let's uh, now take a look at uh, what are the other ways of uh, managing a, a UCS domain or, in fact, multiple UCS domains. So whichever way of managing you choose, uh, all of them are based on an XML API that has been uh, published. It's publicly available. And uh, all of the configuration methods uh, make use of that API. Uh, we've seen the GUI, and there is the option of configuring uh, a UCS domain from the CLI. And given the traction that UCS has gained, there are plenty of third-party tools available. And uh, there is not, nothing stopping you from developing your own tool that you would use to uh, manage UCS, because it lends itself to uh, scripting, uh, which is uh, outside the scope of this presentation. I've mentioned the term service profiles previously. Let's uh, take a closer look at uh, what these are. A service profile is nothing more than an XML file that resides on the Fabric Interconnect and is then pushed on a specific server. What such file can contain? Well, to answer that, let's think of what we would need to provision a new server. We would need some uh, LAN-related configuration, uh, maybe QoS policies, VLANs, MACs, and what have you. Uh, the same with uh, SANs, worldwide port names, QoS settings, vSAN, maybe some BIOS settings, boot options, firmware, and uh, UUID. In fact, we've identified uh, more than 150 of those, uh, those parameters that can be configured uh, by using a service profile. So usually, you'd have to wait until you get the actual server to uh, either determine uh, those parameters or uh, configure them. In Cisco
to UCF, you can do this without even having the server uh, itself. So you can start working on your network deployment before even before the server even arrives. And as you complete that config, uh, when uh, you actually have the physical server in, uh, you then associate this, uh, this profile with a blade that takes roughly uh, three to six minutes. And uh, the server is ready to go. You just uh, need to install uh, whatever uh, software you wish. And uh, the beauty of uh, service profiles is that uh, you can, at any point of time, disassociate that service profile. Say uh, your blade is uh, broken, or uh, its maintenance window uh, is approaching, or perhaps you're uh, switching to a new blade, to a new family of blades. And then you can instantly disassociate that service profile from the blade and move it to another one. The entire process, again, takes about three to six minutes, and you have effectively moved your workload to another blade. This, can, this blade can be in the same chassis. This blade can be in a completely different chassis. And therefore, you gain an unparalleled workload mobility. And think about how much flexibility does it give you. Uh, in fact, let's have a look at the business benefits of using UCS. Uh, as just mentioned, you gain an unparalleled flexibility and agility by uh, having your workloads completely mobile within a UCS domain. Uh, you get less disruption as those moves and spinning up of new servers uh, takes up significantly less time. Uh, you gain ease of management because you can manage up to 160 servers from a single uh, pane of glass. In fact, uh, there are other options such as UCS Central that allow you to manage multiple UCS domain, again from a single point, and gain that workload mobility between your UCS domain. That ease of management can have a significant impact on lowering your OPEX. Furthermore, the automation of the process makes it far less error prone. You can also lower your CAPEX uh, because of the reduced cabling complexity, uh, because of the reduced footprint. Uh, in fact, UCS is one of the densest, if not the densest, uh, compute platforms on the market. Another point worth mentioning is the investment protection. Uh, you might recall that uh, all the systems intelligence is placed on the fabric interconnect. That means that the chassis uh, has been made as simple as possible, and you don't have to replace the chassis when you move to a new generation of plates. And the service profiles can, in fact, uh, migrate to between uh, different generations of plates. That's it for today. If you found it interesting, please visit www.cisco.com slash go slash cpoc to find out more, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.